uh, my name is Austin Belzer uh, from Austin B Media. I am here today with Delaney Buffett, director of the docu short Mootopia, uh, and it is a docu short about well the TikTok creator of the same name who. Honestly, I was unaware of until I had seen this short. In fact, w w one of my uh, questions gets to that. But anyways, um, thank you for coming on, uh, Delaney. It's uh, so great to have you here. I always love interviewing during film festivals because, well, it, it gives people a chance to see the magic that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, totally. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, let's talk about this short. Um, so it, it's kind of a unique short. I don't think we get a lot of shorts about um, TikTok creators. I mean, I, I feel like that's been a recent thing. I know starting at Sundance, uh, they're doing, a, I think, TikTok, TikTok boom or something like that. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. Um, there was that, and then there was something called Jaw, but Jawline, I think, was about, like, an Instagram person. Do you remember that? That was at Sundance one year, so I think there's a bit of a, yeah, a wave of it um, happening right now, for sure. But I haven't seen TikTok from either, no. I yeah, I, it was, like, one of those things where I was like, okay, do I watch this other documentary I want to see, or do I watch this one? I think I should have seen TikTok boom. Uh, in hindsight, given, I think the film I saw in, instead was in the same breath, which I didn't vibe with, given, yeah. the, the, given the time period it was coming out in. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll start off with a real basic question um, that I'm sure you're going to get a thousand times this week. Um, so what inspired you to make this docu short? I think... Um... I, I've been super fat. I don't, I don't have a great relationship with social media, meaning that I don't, um, I don't have the bandwidth and or <laughs> the sanity to visit it on a daily basis. Um, and I think my complicated relationship with social media is not rare. I think a lot of people have that. And I was thinking about myself. I've always thought about myself as a teenager and how insecure I was and how just a mess you are in your head at all times. And I was wondering, you know, I always think, wow, I can't imagine having social media at that, at that age when you're so impressionable and things matter so much to you. Like the world ends every day. Yeah. Um, and so I was always interested in that. And I, I don't know, I, I was very interested in these kids who sort of lived at home still and lived these normal lives, went to high school, had friends, but were famous on the internet. Um, and my friend always tells me about this quote from, um, it's like a bachelorette contestant where she says, <laughs> she goes, um, you know, it's crazy. I walk around all day and no one knows who I am, but when I open my phone, I'm famous. And I, which is amazing to me. And I, I can't imagine that feeling of like, you walk around, you live your life normally, and then you open your phone and you are famous, That how that affects people. So I think I really wanted to sort of do a story about that. Um, and I was researching a ton of, of, I was reading a bunch of articles and, and seeing sort of, cause you know, someone like Charlie D'Amelio, I am not that TikTok you know, I'm not really on TikTok, so I don't know everyone. So I'm just going to say the most famous TikToker of all time, yeah. Charlie D'Amelio. <laughs> um, and her sister, they're, you know, the on the spectrum of they're so famous. They're, they're as famous as a lot of celebrities. But I, I was more interested in someone who's still living at home um, on that level and how, that, how they are and how it's affected them and, and what that's actually like when you um, get behind the camera, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. And I think to speak about behind the camera, it, there, there's kind of a way you, um, you use it where it's like, I'm not trying to invade this space. I'm just trying to be a casual observer, which I thought was very interesting because a lot of documentarians, it's, it's a pet peeve of mine. It is a real pet peeve of mine when I hear sometimes a doc uh, in the documentary I hear somebody ask a question and I'm like I don't want to hear about that I just want to <laughs> hear from the subject um so yeah it, it was 
very interesting because I don't think we get a lot of um, documentaries that just hold that space for the subject. In fact, an interview I have right after this one um, is Bowery. Um, and that's a similar documentary. So I, I think if um, to anyone who's watching this, I think the Tribeca documentaries this year are just stellar. Um, I just wanted to mention that really quick because I think a AFI docs is gone. So it's kind of like Tribeca is kind of the last bastion of, hey, we're, or doc NYC, I guess, is another one. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to mention that really quick. Um, so you say you're not um, really on TikTok all that much. Neither am I. I, I my parents are on TikTok a lot more than I am, <laughs> which is really weird uh, because it's like, I'm the young one. Um, I'm supposed <laughs> to be finding these people and I'm just like, I'll, I'll have like the Diet Coke uh, TikToks where it's like Instagram reels or oh, totally. YouTube, uh, what do they call them? YouTube shorts. Um, I, don't even, I don't even know. I remember Vine. That's what I was uh, sort of like, remember the origin. That was the originator. That was, I was, I wasn't really on that either, but I love, I love any funny video. So even if mm -hmm. people text me TikTok videos, I can get into that. I love a good, funny, short video. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely um, every now and then, if I need a pick me up, I'll go on YouTube and be like iconic Vines and yeah. somebody <laughs> will have like a compilation of like 30 minutes or 40 even an hour sometimes of that. But um, the reason I ask is I didn't know about Mooptopia before this it, or even her second account, um, which you get into, um, I think Rock Collector or something. Um, rock Collector remember. Monster, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rock Collector Monster, that's it. Very but, random, it's okay to remember. Even for her, it's, it's, it was a very random name. <laughs> it, yeah, and that's kind of the point of the yeah. new name. Uh, but um, so how did you, with not being on TikTok as much, how did you find out about Mootopia? So I had read a couple articles. Um, I think there was an article in the Atlantic and there was an article, um, another one that I had read where it was just talking about viral teams. Um, and it was, for her, it was interesting because she was very private. She was very mysterious. She didn't seem like she wanted anyone to know who she was or where she was. Um, and that to me was intriguing because I think what's very interesting about social media now is we are sort of, you know, there is this overexposure of people and people are like, oh, I, I, I like when you're funny, but I don't really want to know anything about you. And then some people want to know everything about everyone. Um, and for her, it, I think her audience loved that she didn't even speak in a lot of her videos. Um, and so I found her in these articles and I and just reading about her. And then I went on and I saw her videos and I was like, whoa, this is very specific niche. And I learned about alt TikTok, which mm -hmm. is something that I, I, for those who don't know what alt TikTok is, maybe I'm the only person in the world who didn't. Um, it, well, it's just <laughs> like a more niche corner of TikTok um, where the creators, I would liken it's like indie film. Like it's like the anti-mainstream um, so she was kind of like the anti-mainstream mainstream indie darling, to put it in film um, film festival terms, is what yeah. I was kind of seeing from all of her fan videos. And so I approached her and I, I, I think I, first of all, I tried to DM her on TikTok, which isn't possible, I learned, unless hmm. she follows you and she wasn't going to follow me. She had like millions of followers. Um, and then I did some sleuthing with some friends who helped me out a bit and they um, found her on Instagram. And so I DM'd her and she was very receptive and um, she immediately responded to me and we had a very nice Zoom where she was very open about everything and very communicative on what she wanted to do and didn't want to do. Um, so that's sort of how I found her and we connected. Yeah, and... It, 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 she's an interesting kind of creator um, as um, if, if people are watching this or listening to this later, um, I'll have an interview with her um, as well, Anastasia. Um, but I, I, I just want to talk a little bit, expound upon the pressures of a content creator, because I think she, I don't know what age she is. I think she's 18. 
19? When it all happened, she was 17. Okay. I think she's 20 now. So I think it was like three, which is crazy to think it was like her ex explosive moment was maybe three years ago. She can give you a more accurate, but I believe she was 17 or 18 when it happened. She was a senior in high school. Yeah. So she has like these moments where um, I'll just give a quote from the docu uh, from the short um, where she says, I don't like giving anything. I don't want to do it anymore, it, which is really insightful for somebody so young to just be open about her feelings about creating on the internet. Uh, and maybe I'll ask her this question too, um, but how do you feel about the pressures of content creation nowadays with brand deals and all that stuff? Yeah, I think from speaking with her, it seems like, there's just pressure to do it all of the time. Yeah. And then I think it's that feedback loop of when you do it, it's that positive reinforcements, those comments, it's everything that comes with it. And you're like, Ooh, I want to do that again. I want another hit of that. That's me speaking. And she's never said that, but that sort of means, you know, taking away from some of the conversations I've had with her and she is wildly self-aware and incredibly, um, willing to talk about the emotional effects it's had on her, which I think is important. Um, and even from the moments I sat down with her, I was very fortunate um, to have someone who kind of was just self-diagnosing herself and figuring stuff out about herself very openly on the camera with me, um, which is something that, you know, you never with a young person you're interviewing, you never know what you're gonna get in front of a camera, um, even with a content creator, because, you know, they're used to, their phone, not some large camera in their face with a boom. Um, and I was lucky that she was very comfortable um, sharing. And I think she'll be able to definitely hit on, um, you know, the effect that it's had on her personally. But that was sort of my observations from it. it. It is a lot of pressure. And I think if I were in that position, it would be very difficult for me to step away because as a teenager, all you want is a person, all you want is validation. And if you're getting it constantly, yeah, why step away? And, and, you know, with the, with the good comes the bad, but, um, I think as a teenager, especially, it'd be very difficult to not read comments. Like you're so pretty. Like, I like you so much. I, if I was a teenager and I was reading that, I'd be like, I am never getting off this thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I even had my own run with it where before I did this, I just did, uh, YouTube videos and I'd get like a comment and I'll be like, oh, there's that positive reinforcement yeah. of you're doing the good thing. Because mind you, I was doing those videos at, and they were just like, oh, hey, let's talk about the flash episode, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, oh, hey, I'm getting validation from these people. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Um, and yeah, it's just, it, it's an interesting idea because it, I think she is very closely aligned with I think a lot of the problems even I have today with content mm -hmm. creation because there's this um, I was talking to somebody else uh, another critic uh, he's not on social media whatsoever and yeah I'm like how do you do that and <laughs> yeah. like how do you not just have a have a social template for the Instagram story and, and have uh, Instagram feed posts and, you know, all these templates. Why don't, totally. Why don't you, and he's just like, I'm not interested. Um, and I'm like, but no, 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 no. You, what do you mean? That's how you get discovered. You yeah, know? that's, yeah. It, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's tricky too. Like you're saying, if it's, a, if it's helps you keep doing what you love to do, then it's yeah. kind of a catch 22 of, I let, sometimes I don't like this sometimes I do but to your like to your point if it's helping you expand you know your world and 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 your job as a critic then it's hard to turn it down or not do it as much it's 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 really I feel that way sometimes with work too where I'm like do I want to post to promote something I'm working on or or do I really want to enter the dark hole that is social media for and by, by the way I have friends who have a healthy relationship with it and are able but me specifically total transparency I it's not the case for me um and that's what's very interesting is is 
totally. Am I going to, I'll post something for work, but then that kind of leads you down a, a whole hole of art, but I'm here now. So why don't I take a peek at this? <laughs> yeah. And it was like, I think what made me realize it was this week. I, let's see, I have to talk around it because I'm under NDA. Um, but I did a study for a social network. I won't name. Um, <laughs> and it was asking like, how much time did you spend discovering these accounts? And co consistently, my answer was like, yeah, like two or three hours. And, yeah. I, and I was like, you know, maybe I don't do that. Maybe <laughs> I should just like relax. Um, <laughs> but then again, there is, a, you know, like Anastasia says, there's that, well, maybe not says, but implies um, that there's this trap of, you know, she talks about creating what, um, 10 videos in the last six minutes at one point. Um, yeah. And it's just like, yeah, I've been there where it's like, I, I've posted 20 times in a day. And then it's like, oh, right. Um, that's not <laughs> healthy because the next day I'd be just totally wiped out. Yeah. So, yeah. No. And I think she, it, what's interesting is there's a part of, of the film where I was, so her account, which is a part of the film gets, uh, a band um yep. and there was and I kept refreshing to see if it was coming back and there's a point in the film where I say you could only time you really hear my voice your account's back and it happened to be one of those things where I got very lucky where I was just scrolling looking while we were kind of like shooting around messing around and her account appeared back up for the first time I think in like we like a few like a week or a couple days and I was lucky to get that moment on camera, but what followed was you, I thought she'd be happy yeah. and you know, she's not, it was almost like an, it's an excuse. It's like, okay, I don't have to do this because I can't, um, which I thought was very interesting to watch was like, it, I thought she'd be thrilled that it was back up. And then in the moment I got like, I did get, you know, she was happy at first, but then it was kind of like a spiral of, oh God, it's back. What do I do? I, I was kind of on a vacation and I don't know if that soundbite is in there but she kind of referred to it as like she was enjoying her vacation away from the account she was enjoying her time away she wishes she had one more week away so I, it's very interesting to see the push and pull yeah she even says can can I get them to suspend it for longer or something <laughs> yeah. like that it's like yeah, can, yeah. can they give me like an extra week you know yeah a little I, more time <laughs> and I and I think there is that thing of where you know, you know, it is kind of like, oh, I've started doing this new thing. Why should I do the old thing? Especially when the old thing, you know, caused all this, yeah, you know, pro these problems, uh, which you do see in the on the uh, short. But um, yeah, it, it's that that scene is fascinating, and I am glad you got that on camera because I think that is the highlight of the short, and also highlights some of the stuff where I was talking about, you know, you kind of just are hanging back. You're not trying to, you know, get in her face and be like, Hey, let me get every tier or, you know, <laughs> what, whatever, um, that a lot of documentaries are guilty of. So, um, yeah, I, uh, but yeah, it is, it's one of the highlights of the, of, of the short. I was very um, fortunate to get it too. And yeah, I, all I wanted was she kind of was just going for a long time and, and some of it's not in there obviously, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was a moment that I was lucky to capture because it was just kind of in my mind in cap, it just encapsulated sort of the, the feeling of the, the film in general, which was fortunate that I was able to get it. Yeah. And I, I definitely think um, everyone should check this out. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's playing at Tribeca at home. Uh, starting June eighth at six p.m. I think it runs the whole time. I'm not entirely sure yet. Also, I'll put an asterisk there because I think you're right. I, I think you get a pass and it runs, but I'm not sure either. So we can yeah. do our individual research. <laughs> yeah, that's been a, a theme. I'll have the uh, link to uh, the film page in the description below. Uh, you can, I think you can. Let's see, you can do a shorts pass, which. I believe, yeah, that's only 25 bucks. So instead of spending the 150 bucks for everything, you can just pay the 25 and get access to this. Um, but Delaney, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank it was you a very much. It's a real pleasure. Having me.
It was a pleasure being here. And, and okay, and uh, everyone can look forward to my review uh, sometime this week it, it, when on June eighth. Um, <laughs> so, I, again, thank you so much, Delaney. Yeah, thank you.